praise God forevermore. Thank you so much for joining me today on Maranatha Teaching Channel. I'm your host, Femi Fenojo. Last time, we resume our series of teaching on the last days. This, by the grace of God, is the final season. The plan is to make it a series of short, around 10 minutes, voice-only teaching. Last time, we started laying some foundation and defining the direction this series of teachings will take. So, we are talking about the events of the last days. We mentioned that the last days is a period that extends from the first coming of our Lord Jesus to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This period will wrap up what the Bible calls the times of the Gentiles and will culminate in a period that the Bible calls Jacob's trouble. This will then trigger the day of the Lord, the end of this age, and the inauguration of the new age. Where are we now in this timeline? Yes, we are in the last days, but more specifically, we are in the, at the tail end of the last days. International events are aligning themselves to trigger the beginning of the last seven year period of the last days. Maranatha, the Lord comes. We established last time that the study of the last thing, eschatology, is not optional. This understanding is very important part of Christian curriculum. And ignorance in this area will manifest as weakness in our kingdom living and certain impotence in our witness in these last days and effectiveness of the church. It will also skew our knowledge of God. So, we must not allow the confusion and small screen of the enemy to discourage us from reading, studying, meditating, understanding, and living out the Christian life in these last days. For example, in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 19, we read, And Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Sorry, I will read that again. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hast not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Today, the same argument about the person of the Lord Jesus still rages on. Some believe that the Lord Jesus never existed. Some believe he is just a teacher or just another prophet or just a good man. Every religion seems to have something or the other to say about him. Note, the confusion, argument, counter-argument about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ did not and must not discourage us from understanding who the real Jesus is. Like Peter in this area of eschatology, we must trust God to reveal the truth about his dealings in the last days to us. We cannot afford to throw this important area of biblical revelation away. A well-grounded understanding of biblical revelation of the last day will enrich our knowledge of God and enhance our fear of him. Remember, the Bible tells us that the fear of God is the beginning. The chief, the choicest part, the principal things about knowledge and wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. Now, there are those people that do not believe in prophecy. They do not believe in last day teaching, nor do they believe in anything supernatural. These people will take Christ out of Christianity. They allegorize clear prophetic writings. Now, we are not dealing with this group of people. Also, there are those people who, even though they believe in prophecy, insist that it has all been fulfilled and that there is no future fulfillment of prophecy. We are not dealing with this group of people. I am dealing with 
I am dealing with those of us that believe in prophecy, that believe in the last days as revealed to us on the pages of the scripture. The strategy, of the, en- the, strategy the enemy uses against us is to sow seed of confusion and doubt. He has created so much animosity and toxic environment in this area of study of eschatology such that it has become fashionable for people to avoid or be suspicious of studying end time or prophecy. I know there are areas of the last day revelation and prophecy that are not very clear for now. As such, these are led to all sorts of debate and confusion. However, there are more areas that are clearly revealed to us. We can at least start from what we know, why we trust God to reveal more to us. We must not allow what we cannot know now to discourage us from what we can know. I would say that again. We must not allow what we cannot know now to discourage us from what we can know. Unfortunately, when people talk about the last day, they often focus first on the differences, on the arguments, on the counter argument, rather than emphasizing that which are clearly revealed. Contrary to what people say, there are more areas of agreement in eschatology than has been emphasized. We must emphasize this area because, as we shall see later, this is the major or principal issue concerning the end time. At the root of the confusion and argument about end time, eschatology are not the end time events themselves, but their timing. I will say that again. At the root of the confusion that we see around us about eschatology, the issue oftentimes is not the end time event themselves, but people's timing. Most people in the group that believe in prophecy will usually not argue about reality of end time events. But my brothers and sisters have taken up arms and attacked each other because we don't agree on the timings of these events. The enemy then undermined the reality of the end time events, the authenticity of prophecy by the infighting about their timing. This is totally unfortunate. I repeat that there is more scope of agreement concerning end time events that we have given credit for. There are indeed some differences in interpretation, but the major bone of contention is usually in the ar- arena or area of timing. We need to focus more on the reality, implication, application of the end time event themselves. We can then and only then debate the timing, how be it with a big dose of humility. Another unfortunate trend among brothers and sisters in this debate and argument about the end time is this. Oftentimes, various schools of thought concerning end times are accused of crimes they never committed. Words are put into their mouth. They are then vilified, insulted and assaulted by the accusers whose testimony was dishonest to begin with. This creates a lot of confusion in trying to piece out what each school of thought really teaches and in trying to come to a conclusion as to what is right and what is wrong. I will be discussing this further by the grace of God in later teaching. Thank you for being a part of this teaching today. Please join me next time on Baranata Teaching Channel. Thank you. Shalom.